Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. ASCII, you know it? ASCII? Is that what it's called? That's 1k away from being ASCII, so maybe I should call it that. Uh, but it's basically like the standard encoding, like text format for the web. And I was always fascinated by all the ASCII art people would make. And I was thinking like, how could I incorporate this into my new platform? Because I have a lot of like different animations going on, like the zipper effect that I just did with SVG. And I thought, ooh, actually, I remember seeing the ghosty like the terminal, uh, their website has this gorgeous, gorgeous ghost animation. Uh, so I basically went through and looked through, like, how can I achieve this in the most easiest way possible? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to, I'm going to show you how you can create these fire animations. You can create this coin animation as well, pretty much anything you want. So if you like this episode, you know what to do. I don't need to say it. Let's get going. So in the past two weeks or so, I've basically done a deep dive trying to find out what's the easiest and best way we can get this done. And I was looking through the internet. One thing that people recommended was to just like take your images and turn them into ASCII art, uh, which works pretty well. So there's like this website, ASCIIart.eu, uh, that works pretty well. So if I pop in an image here, Let's put this one, for example, from League, Ash, right? And then that's the result that you can get. And then with this tool, you can also like adjust the sizing of this, right? And the brightness to kind of get the image out more. See it because the background showing up with these lines. So if I increase the brightness, I can get it to maybe like a position where it disappears like that. And then you can also increase the contrast and saturation, which is all fine and dandy. Like you can actually get like a decent result with that, even though this one doesn't look too, too nice right now. And the problem is, uh, if you have like you you want to create an animation right you're going to need to do this for every single frame uh, which can be like super tedious especially if you have like 200 300 frames and that you want to render out this is just becomes just a nightmare right you might have an effect that doesn't even look good and then you just spend an hour so this is an option if you just want to render out an image but if you want to do an animation uh sucks this sucks so let's look at something else Another way I saw people recreate this effect is using After Effects. So you can actually import SVG shapes in here, create your animation, and then essentially add a filter on top of it that gives you this ASCII look. Uh, I want to shout out Panther here on YouTube for this little tutorial here. Uh, but when you actually add it to the website, the only problem with this is that it's a video, right? It's it's not actually ASCII characters animating there, like on the Ghosty website. So this is an option out there if you want something a bit more simple. Um, but again, it's just going to be a video that's embedded on your website. So this was a no-go for me. I wanted a bit more control over because... If it's just ASCII characters, then you can animate the characters how you want, or you can color them or do any other effects to them. So this is an option out there for you After Effects people out there, but I say no to Adobe every time. Uh, so I'm going to say no again. Now, before I show you my solution, the only other one that I found that was actually pretty good as an alternative is to use Tree.js. If you use Tree.js, you can apply an effect on top of it with Dre, I believe they have this, uh, where you can just add ASCII to it. The real powerful thing about this is that you can actually like move the thing around and actually interact with it. So if you want like ASCII that you can interact with, uh, 3JS is the one to go for. Now for me personally, for our platform as well, I didn't want to include the whole 3JS library and a bunch of utilities uh, just as dependencies and it's going to take up a bunch of space and all of that jazz, right? So I skipped on it. I wanted a more native solution because the only downside is the actual like characters, you cannot really grab them here uh, because this is just an effect applied to the 3D scene. Uh, but this is a great solution out there. So if you want to check out 3JS, search up ASCII, you're going to find it. Uh, it's quite easy to just add the layer on top of it. But let me show you my script. Uh, to actually turn any video uh, into ASCII animation. All right, so this is how you can get it up and going. I'm going to post this code on GitHub so you can get it and play with it yourself. This is just a, like a simple Next.js project here, but I have this ASCII.sh here, which is uh, basically a modified version of what Ghosty uses. They use like specific colors to like get the shapes and everything. This is more based on the like darkness and light values. So I'll just 
quickly take you through the script, but again, it's gonna be on the GitHub so you can get it and try it with your own stuff. So one is gonna be here, you have a font uh, ratio, which is just gonna like adjust the width and the height of the font that's used for like the rendering. Uh, you have the luminescence threshold here. So I'll show you the videos I'm gonna use in just a second, but usually they have like a black background. So if you increase the limit here, it's gonna come more of that out. So you can play around with it, but it's basically between zero and 20, uh, 255. Then you have the ASCII characters here, and these go from like dark to light, all the way to light, right? So for the darkest shapes, you have a simple like dot and simple lines. And then the more like intense the light gets, you have like these characters that are like really detailed, right? And it's gonna look really nice. Then you have the video formats as well. I put a couple here, I just use the MP4 usually. Output FPS, I left that to 24. I'll actually up this to 30 to make it look a bit smoother. And then you have the output column. So you can make this image a bit smaller or uh, bigger. I'll left it at 100. I'll reduce this as well to maybe something like 80 because the last one I had was quite big. And the next step of this is essentially using FFmpeg. So make sure you have that installed on your system, but I'm defining a video file and a working directory. So I'm saving this in the frame images here in my root folder. And then I'm essentially just extracting a PNG from each individual frame, all right? So this is gonna generate a PNG of the whole sequence of the video. And once it does that, I'm using this tool called Magic, I believe it was called Magic with a K at the end there. And this is essentially gonna detect the values of each pixel and the colors of each pixel. And based on that, we are essentially adding here, if we go up to pixel four, we're essentially inserting those ASCII characters based on the like luminescence threshold value. Okay, so that's kind of the whole gist of the script. Uh, and then let me just kind of show you a little example here that I have with a video. So let me just show you the two animations I tried. I have this coin MP4, as you can see, it's just a simple coin animation. And I got this off YouTube, which is a flame animation. But if you're interested, you can try it with videos, as long as they have like a black background. You can even do it with white background and just like switch uh, the threshold over. But if you're interested in, in like getting more of these, uh, what I actually recommend is having a look at Lottie here. And they have a bunch of animations that you can simply get. And after you get them, you can even like download them as MP4. All right, so you can go through here. They kind of suck. They limit you to like six things that you can add here, which, ugh, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Um, but as long as you can, you can even like create the animation and, and you know, After Effects, if, if that's your, your deal. Uh, but any of these will work fine. Uh, and again, videos as well. So you can even like do a green screen video and then just, you know, add that as your threshold and remove it. Uh, but this is like, this is why I tried and it worked really, really well. Okay, so after this is ready, all we need to do, look, I have my videos here in the public, as you can see. Uh, I already added the frames here for each individual one, but let's try to regenerate one. So all you need to do is run the command um, dot slash, we're gonna say ascii.sh, and I'm gonna say public, and let's try the coin.mp4, and let's run this, and there we go. So when this is running, as you can see, the first step that's gonna happen is, let me go to the top here, you're gonna see that it's generating a folder, ASCII frames with the frame images here, and it extracts all the individual PNG files. And after it does that, the magic is gonna run and check this out. Look at that. Let me zoom this out a little bit. And then again, with the threshold, you can refine how this looks like if you want more detail out of it. See, for this one now, I can maybe increase it a little bit because it's kind of hard to see the dollar sign. Uh, if I show you in this one, as you can see, it's it's a tad bit clear. So you can kind of experiment uh, with the threshold and see kind of what you get. But that's it. And then once these frames get generated, so you, oh, you just have to wait to process. I essentially just took all these TXTs and copied them over uh, into my public folder. So in my public folder now, I have one frame here, right? All the frames. And then I did one for the flame as well, just like that. Okay, now how can we actually get this running in Next.js or whatever, React, wherever you want to run this? 
Let me also show you the animation manager that you can use in React to essentially render this out really smoothly. So this is again, like a modified version of what Ghost uses, but we essentially have a class animation manager here where we define a couple of different properties like the frame time, the start pause, you can have functionality like that. But we have this update as well, which essentially checks the delta time. Uh, so you can get this like really smooth 60 FPS with a request animation frame. I define like an interface as well, where you can kind of like plug in your FPS here and your frame counts because each animation can have different amounts of frames to loop through. Uh, so I kind of customized this a little bit. I added the frame folder as well, just to kind of experiment with this. But essentially, uh, as you can see, they get plugged in here. And then what we do is we call use state on this animation manager, and then we just set the current frame over and over again. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the looping happens right here at the bottom. The way the output of this file happens is the following, right? If I have a look here in my public, it basically how my bash script runs is it generates frame 00010002. So you have to do like a frame underscore and then you do path start to add the four zeros and then just add the txt there at the end. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And then you just try to fetch all of them with a wait promise all, load them up and then set the frame ref current to the loaded frames. And that's pretty much it. And that's gonna run, it's gonna update the FPS here in the use effect. Uh, it's gonna unmount it here in this use effect as well. So it's gonna remove the focus and blur. Right now it's set so when you actually just like hover over the animation, uh, it turns on, but that's pretty much it. And let me just pull up the thingy here to the side so you can see it. So this is the f uh, flame animation. And by default, this is just gonna be dark, uh, but you can actually mess around with like mixed blend modes to add colors to it. So if I remove this for a second, this is just gonna be like normal text, right? Uh, but I added a color overlay property here, and then you can add like a gradient or something on it, something cool like that. And then you do a mixed blend mode, you can experiment with color, color burn and color dodge and kind of see what kind of results you get. But this goes from like a the reddish to like an orangey color. And this is the effect that you get. Pretty cool, right? And now they have this like animation um, manager here where you can do simply instantiate another one. So I can instantiate another one here, for example. Uh, I can pass in the frame folder with a frame count as well. This one has 60. Uh, this coin animation, and then also I can add the FPS if I want to. Now this might need a little bit more space. I don't know how this is positioned. I might need to just, I'm using the mouse in the oven. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll just post it down here at the bottom so we can see, because that was added in a little grid, I believe. But look at that, there we go. Let me zoom this out so you can see a little bit better. Look at that, you get that nice running animation. And if I remove the color overlay, then it'll just go to like a dark mode. So really cool. I, I really like can't wait to experiment more with this. Uh, I'll rewrite some of the stuff. So this is not going to be the final version of it. Uh, but I've been playing around with this. I've been having a lot of fun and I want you to try it out as well. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So link is going to be in the description. Thank you so much for uh, supporting this channel. Our baby just turned two weeks old today. I can't believe uh, I still am awake and have the energy. And uh, it's crazy to think by the time he's going to be like eight years old, all of these JavaScript frameworks are probably going to be all dead by that time. Uh, it's going to be crazy. We're going to teach him C when he's four years old on stream. It's going to be a good time. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.